Seth all sorted here, guys. How are you, How are you doing? Ugh. Ugh. Hang on. Get this chair sorted out properly. Get my life sorted. Everything. Ah. <laughs> How are we all doing, guys? Welcome along to another Sunday night chat. Uh, sorry, guys. We'll just catch up on who's been already. Dig a mic first tonight. Chichur, bro. Uh, then we've got Jade's Adventures. Chur, bro, welcome. Brian, how's it, my man? And Mad Kiwi, all vying for top top position. But yeah, dig a mic, got yours all tonight. Uh, Logan Murray's in the house. How's it, buddy? Welcome along. And yeah. Hope we're all doing well. It's been a couple of weeks since um since we've done a livey, so heaps been going on. Uh, Jacob, fifteen fifty six. How's it, buddy? I hope you're well. Um, let's just skip that ad and get into it. All righty, Stephen Dixon. Have you seen those medals prices? They got uh, the gold. My goodness. It's getting a bit silly, isn't it? Um, how long do you guys think it's going to last, though? And what's it going to do? Um, I mean, historically, it goes up crazily and then pretty much uh, drops a little bit and peters out. But, yeah, is it going to drop again or is it going to keep going? It's A lot of people are saying it's going to keep going for a little bit. So, ideal if you're on the gold. Not so good if you're like me and you've got none. <laughs> So I'm thinking about maybe making some knives and bartering for some gold, sell some knives for some gold. But yeah, should have kept my gold. I know hindsight's a great thing though, and a digger might. It's just one, yeah, is one of those things. It's, I mean, it's always going to go up, and everybody knows it's going to go up. But yeah, it's um, it's waiting for those cycles and being able to time it right and and sometimes it just doesn't necessarily work that way you've got to you've got to offload it to, to pay bills or something like that but dunstan downs how's it charlie hope you hope you're well bud um actually i sent you a um i sent you a um little message earlier too um What's the price? How much do the little sniper coils for the eight eight hundred, the Knox eight hundred, go for? What do they retail for? Um, I've got a spare one that old digger might wants to buy, so I need to know how much I've got to charge him. I have many millions. <laughs> so, Logan says had the weirdest hunt today. Decided to dig a hole that sounded like trash, and found six Australian half pennies and a pendant. That said, finders keepers causes happiness and good luck. Oh, that sounds like it might have been planted, bro. That almost sounds like it's um may have been may have been buried back in the day. That's that's pretty cool. Chur Jade, legendary buddy. Stephen Hyde's in the house. Hey Matt, how's things? Things are going well, buddy. Uh, now I've got you here, Stephen Hyde. Chur, bro. Much appreciated. Get you in the barrel there. Um, yeah, Logan, that really sounds almost like um, that. Almost sounds like that's been planted. Eh? Hey, that's that's crazy. How's it, Nigel? How did you get on with all that um, nasty weather on the coast, bro? Did that guys get you up in Hokitika, and uh, did it come up that far, or did you just get the 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 bad rain? I mean, did you get any flooding and and, heart and nastiness out of it all. I know further down, like the likes of Josh James and all those guys and friends and Fox got absolutely hammered, but <laughs> nothing out of the normal. Oh, that's good to hear, bro. Good to hear. Oh, at least you've, at least you've uh, dodged that one. Because um, I know further down the coast, it was, yeah, it, it hammered them big time. A um, few bridges out. 155 mil. Oh, that... That's just an afternoon's rain, isn't it, bro? <laughs> oh, good to hear you're okay, mate. Good to hear you're okay. 
So what's everybody been up to? I am pretty much getting back on the old horse and getting back into the swing of things, eh? So um, insurance have finally paid me out. They actually paid me out just before I went away last weekend. So I've been able to replace a few bits and pieces. Um, and you probably noticed on the old uh, thumbnail of this video, I've got myself a new kayak. I actually picked that up yesterday morning. <coughs> so got another pretty cool deal, which was quite exciting. Cutting up all that meat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, we've cut up and uh, staked and minced all ours, bro. Uh, I've just got to get a... Um, uh, we're looking at a mess. I've got to get a big pot to uh, boil up my, my head. Uh, not my head. Um, I have got... I've got a new set of antlers to replace this guy here, this eight-pointer. Uh, I have got a monster 12-pointer that I got down with Charlie last weekend. And you've probably seen the video. Uh, so that 12-pointer, I'm actually going to take that eight-pointer down and I'm going to replace that with the 12-pointer. Uh, I can't put the 12-pointer right here behind me because it's actually bigger and it won't fit in that spot. And it needs to be, the skull needs to be lower on that piece of macrocarpa. So the handlers keep off the ceiling. So he's a big beast. He's a big fella. So pretty stoked about that. Um, yeah. Back straps were tender as. Yeah, I did notice that. We um, we put all ours in the, in the fridge for about a week and just aged it a little bit. And, oh, yeah, flip me. Just cut up nice. Just knife just, just. Yeah, beautiful. It was a good trip, bro. It was a magic trip. And again, thanks so much. That was legendary. If any of you guys are hunters and you want to um, head out on a pretty epic uh, private property trip with old Charles from Dredge NZ, give him a yell. Give him an email. Um, it is a beautiful spot. Hut's magic. And um, yeah, yeah, old Charles certainly goes out of your way to make sure it's an epic, epic trip. Uh, I ended up... I got a, accidentally got a little bit greedy and shot two stags on the first day and then another huge donkey of a stag on the last day. Uh, well, actually on the, no, on the second day because we were there for three, three days. Um, but that took a lot of effort to get that one. It was a big stalk and yeah, it was awesome. But very cool. Um, yeah, the hut looked epic, man. It, it, it was epic. The, we stayed in the little musterer's hut, and I didn't really show the main hut too much because it's actually it's a private hut for that that Charles actually owns. Uh, so I didn't really show too much of that. And also inside there were uh, lots of personal photos and some other rather revealing calendars. That <laughs> wouldn't have really cut the mustard on my channel. So... <laughs> So I didn't worry about doing too much of that, but um, definitely, guys, if you're if you're after a bit of a trip away and you want you want that high country experience, definitely need to hit Charles up and do a trip there. Even if you're not not a hunter, but you just like some scenery and you like a bit of a walk, um, yeah, by all means, guys, hit him up. He'd, he'd be all all too happy to to take take you out there and and show you the back country experience. It, it's a beautiful spot, absolutely, just. Gorgeous. Big Timber. Cheers, matey. Thanks for that. Welcome to the chat. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first thing Charles to. Yep. Take up your girlfriend. She'll lose her clothes in a minute. He um cranks up the wee pot belly uh, fire in there. And I kid you not, they've insulated that little hut so well, it just it ends up like a sauna. Uh, one stage there at about midnight on the Saturday night, we were all sitting there with a... But yeah, that could have been the the, uh, the beers as well. But <laughs> uh, either way, it was a magic, magic uh, trip, bro. So thank you so much. That was It was epic. Cheers, Logan. Much appreciated, bro. Get you in the big barrel as well. So yeah, so pretty lucky with that. So I've got to um, all I've got to do now is I've I've stripped and skinned, head skinned the actual skulls, um, and what I'm going to do is I've I've 
cut the tops off the, the two little ones and the boys are going to get those in their rooms. And I've just got to boil up the big scale now and do a big euro mount. So it's similar to this guy here with the um, with the full scale mount and, and antlers. So going to be quite epic. It's going to look look pretty cool. So I have the, uh, I'll have this guy here, which is my first ever stag, uh, the guy in the background here. And then right beside it, where this guy is, I'm going to have my big 12-pointer. So, oh, it's awesome. I'm really looking forward to getting that, and I'll, I'll be able to show that on the uh, on the video. Um, thanks, Brian. I'll throw a couple, uh, couple of... Um, oh, now we're just getting all carried away, aren't we? <laughs> thanks, Brian. Jade can't be... Can't be uh, outdone, can you, bro? <laughs> Legend. We'll throw your name in here a few times, bro. I'm going to run out of paper. Keep this up. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. So, yeah, so epic, epic trip. But the flip side was, is while I was down with Charles at Dread Gen Z, uh, and with my um, insurance money, I was able to get a brand new detector. And... Um, yeah, Charles definitely looked after me and definitely hooked me up. But check it out, guys. Woohoo! I upgraded and I've gone to the. Does it say it on there? Oh, it does, yeah. You just can't read it on the screen there. I've gone to the Equinox 900. And oh, here we go. Got the big war going on. Cheers, Brian. Mate, you guys are legend. Oh, NZ Warriors in the house as well. Brian, I'll just throw a couple of your names in there. Get a few in there for you. Cheers, mate. Much appreciate. And NZ Warriors Man is in the house. Get you and the little members bear at barrel. How you doing, mate? Oh, Aurori Gold is in the house as well. How's it, Jeff? Hope you're doing well. And James Coates. Welcome. There's a new name in the uh, in the chat. Welcome to the chat, guys. Uh, good to have you all here. So yeah, so I have fully upgraded and gone to the 900. Um, decided that I'd upgrade from the 800. And oh my goodness, this thing is so light. It is amazing because these come factory with the uh, with the um, carbon fiber shafts. And they are a whole heap lighter than the uh, Equinox 800s. But uh, I went out yesterday with it. I went out with Josh um, to a really cool permission he'd uh, um, got. And it was way, way, way out on Banks Peninsula. I won't say where because it was his permission. But it was an 18, 1860s farm. I th possibly even went back earlier, but because the, there was a sod cottage on there. I think it goes right back to the 1840s, but the, the old cottage we were detecting around was 1860s and burnt down in the 1930s. Uh, we didn't really find much. Uh, we're not entirely sure, actually, even if it was the right location because there wasn't a lot of household stuff. We moved around and there was, there was more trash in different areas. But I did manage to find a couple of silvers there and a penny and he uh, josh found a couple of pennies and some musket balls so definitely error correct error uh my two silvers were thruppence and they were british one was 1877 and one was 1879 so right around that right right era right time uh the penny was an australian penny 1917 uh but that was quite a wee way away from the actual where they said the cottage was uh, so yeah, it was quite cool to get something that was pretty close to the um, to the the relevant age of the property. But one thing I didn't realise about the old Knox nine hundred is that they've widened the numbers. They've gone back out to one hundred or ninety nine with their numbers. So it was a big learning curve for me. So completely new machine, new numbers, tones are. F I'm finding the tones were fairly similar. Um, but the numbers just, just threw me. So it was like, ah, so I pretty much just anything that sounded clean and sharp, I just dug and just made mental notes of the numbers. 
Um, because what really got me was the wee silver thruppences were actually they were only ringing up fifty nine sixty for a silver, and they were only a couple of inches down. So it was random. It was it was giving me all kinds of interesting signals. So definitely got a big learning curve ahead of me. Um, but yeah, uh, beautiful machine, so light you could swing that thing all day. It was it was it was cool. Brendan, sup Mr. Manning, Brendan here, long time listener, <laughs> watcher, first time commenter, well done Brendan, you got to start somewhere bro, <laughs> um, Johnny Howe was in the house as well, are you into duck shooting, can you, anyone, watch me? any spots around North Canterbury area, uh, I don't really do a lot of duck shooting, um, I did a little bit back in the day when uh, I had access to a pond up in uh, Oxford, but that was my mate's farm pond. Uh, I don't know where... North Canterbury, you're probably looking at your riverbeds, mate. Uh, the likes of up in the Wymac or the Ashley. Um, setting up your decoys in like an eddy or something like that. Um, that would be uh, your best way... Most guys go to Lake Ellesmere in Christchurch or they have their own um, private access ponds that they can get to. Um, but the biggest public access duck area is your um, is your rivers and Lake Ellesmere. Um, but again, you've got to get in there pretty early in the piece to tag your uh, Mai Mai. Uh, I, I, I have heard it is quite hard to get a Mai Mai in there. Um, I think from what you've seen, I think from what I've seen is that the full sovereign, half sovereign rings up. Solid 49 on the Manticore. So it could be, it probably is the same, yeah, probably is the same numbers um, as the Manticore. I must, yeah, I'll, I'll probably sit down and watch some YouTube chat, uh, YouTube um, videos on, on the two machines and just do some comparisons and get the numbers running and yeah. Yeah, but I mean, most, I don't think anybody's really done a numbers thing for New Zealand yet, um, even on the Manticore maybe, so all our coins will probably be different, I'll probably get all the same num all the numbers uh, from like the UK on all the British stuff, but our New Zealand coins, I think we're just going to have to, I don't know if anybody's done that yet, I'll probably, I might even look at doing that um, fairly soon actually, to be honest, that's probably a good idea, yeah. Stephen Dixon says, stubble close to a river, um, Johnny Hill. If you if you basically, yeah, what you want is just stubble or good cover um, by a river. Um, generally in an eddy, they won't they won't sort of pull, um, gather up in the fast flow, but you want a bit of an eddy or a backwater. Uh, backwaters are real good too. Um, and generally anything where there's a bit of feed close by. So, Anything that's bordering farmlands um, with with paddocks close by, stable paddocks close by, uh, you'll probably do well. Um, but again, you've got to be really careful of your backdrop and your shooting zones and where where you're actually shooting and setting up as well. And make sure that there's no houses and yeah, public public too close. Uh, Logan Murray, my dream metal detector is a Manticore. What a piece of art. Yeah, I would have loved to have gone up to a Manticore, but my insurance company, um, they have what they call this depreciation um, clause. And basically, so everything, even when you've got like for like, there are certain elements or certain things that still fall into a depreciation catalogue and sports gear and all that sort of stuff um, still falls into that depreciation category. So... Yeah, everything got depreciated a little bit, so I didn't quite get the amount I was hoping for, but I've sacrificed sacrificed a couple of other items or toys uh, to step up and uh, spend the extra money and get the 900. And um, yeah, so far, I can't really say if, I, if it was the right choice, but after swinging it for most of Saturday and on the hilly, hilly um, farm, uh, I, was, I was really liking the lightweight shafts and the actual overall weight of the machine. Uh, swing's really nice. 
Uh, even the handle's a little bit skinnier too, uh, so that that makes it a little bit nicer to to use. Um, but other than that, no, the interface, the display, everything else is pretty much the same as the uh, the eight hundred. So it does have a few more little functions and bits and pieces. But um, yeah, I've still got to learn all those, but that'll come. So just, yeah, challenge, bro. Eight hundred versus yeah, I'll take you on, Digger Mike. I'll take you on. <laughs> Definitely, bro. Altitude hunting. Awesome video in our target, mate. Top notch. Cheers, mate. I was pretty gutted with that video, actually, to be honest. Um, altitude hunting. I had a brand new GoPro 12, and I filmed probably 60% of the actual hunt on that. So all my all my firing, firing the rifle, um, a whole lot more narrative, uh, and all my B-roll was on that on that um gopro and for some reason i got home i could watch it all on the gopro and it was piece that was all there but as soon as i pulled my card out and went to download it all into the computer it turned around and said file not found and it was like really weird and then it come up saying format disk uh yeah format disk i was like what it's all on there and then i threw it back into the gopro and the gopro came up uh, SD card error uh, format card. So basically, from transferring, pulling the card out of the GoPro to putting it into the laptop, something has happened to it and corrupted the files. And um, I just wanted to cry. It was like my dream hunt, dream video. It was going to be just, it was going to be epic. I had some cool shots on that on that um, GoPro. Um, I had some close ups of an Alpine skink and. Uh, I had action shots of the of me shooting um, all all of the all three stags actually, uh, and I had some funny narratives on there as well. Me being a clown after I realised I'd shot two stags accidentally, um, but yeah, it's just and for some reason I just lost the whole lot and I was gutted because that um, it could have been a much better much more flowing video with just a lot more of the scenery and a lot more cool stuff in there and a lot more of me talking which would have explained quite a bit more of what happened in that video um but as it was i was able to stitch it together and i've actually i've been told by a lot more people that it was actually a pretty cool video and quite a raw video which was interesting i i didn't think it would do so well i thought it would sort of flop a little bit and be a bit here there and and, and too much of a bitzer but um yeah i think it's just about to tick over five thousand views already um from it so it's it's doing really well so far so i can't complain it's it's worked it's done the job um and it still portrays the big stag which is probably the best part of it uh but yeah no thanks altitude hunting <laughs> bigger mic it's on then sweet uh that's a real bugger technology can definitely be oh it can be altitude hunting it really can be you sort of yeah i think you almost get too too dependent on it too eh? and it's like you just yeah i've got to be a bit more careful maybe have some backup cards not put everything on one card i mean i don't know i reformatted the card did some recording and it um it seems to be okay now so i don't know um I'm doing everything in 4K 60 frames per second now too, so I'm sort of, yeah, maybe I had too much on there, but they are 120, 128 gigabyte cards, so it was definitely not even close to being maxed out, but yep, such is life. It's what happens, isn't it? Jacob, from memory, the numbers, NZ threepence is 35 to 40-ish. Oh, okay, they're that low. Uh, 49 to 50 ish for a sixpence. Okay. Yes, I do know the shilling comes up in the 60s because I found a shilling. We went to Diamond Harbour after that and I did find a shilling over there and I did notice that that was a, there was a 59, 59.60 with the shilling, um, New Zealand silver shilling. So I do remember that. Um, 79 to 89 for a florin okay oh and a half crown they're both about the same interesting okay 
The numbers can vary. There's a big range on them. Oh, that's good to know. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks, mate. British half crown is 92 on the Manticore. Yeah, I figured nine in the 90s would be big silvers um, like anything because it's the same with the Nocta Macros and theirs. Like anything 90, 80, 85 to 95 is always big silvers. Um, yeah, 90 and above, big silver, big target. Yeah, I got a screaming clean as 94, 95 and I thought I was onto a big silver. Um, but it ended up being a big axe head, big old axe head. So that was pretty cool. Uh, left that for the owner. Oh, true, Nigel. Thanks, matey. Get you in the barrel. Where's your name? There it goes. Thanks, bud. My dream is actually just finding a silver coin again. Have you not found too many, Logan? You got to get out there and uh, start swinging a bit more, bro. Daniel Price, how's the shoulder? About to get a... Oh, you're about to get a full replacement. Oh, you poor thing. My shoulder's actually doing really well, bro. Um, full credit to my physio. He... Re he's... he's Man, I... I kid you not, I have full and utter movement, rotation, and stretch in my shoulder. Um, pretty much the same as what I can do with my other arm. And strength-wise, it is probably stronger than it was prior to the accident. Um, he pushed me pretty hard. So, yeah. One thing I will say, though, Daniel, is once you have your replacement and you get your operation, do what you're told. Um I spoke to a lot of guys my age who had had the operation done and they basically, yeah, flipped. They told me they went back to work too much, too quick. They didn't really listen to the physio. They didn't do what they were told. They thought, ah, oh, she'll be right, rah, rah, rah. And within six months, they were back getting it redone uh, and they were off work again, off on ACC because they didn't listen. So by all means, mate, um, Daniel, do what the surgeon tells you, do what the physio tells you, and you'll be right. You'll it'll it'll be tickety boo. I mean, I, honestly, mate, my shoulder is as strong as it strong as it was the day, like before I had the accident. It's it's really good, and I don't have any issues with it. I don't get aching in it or anything like that. Um, yeah, it it feels really good. So by all means, mate, good luck, but listen to your surgeon and and do what you're told. Uh, Logan Price, I got five silvers last night, four thrusts and a sixpence. Oh, you're just skiting, digger Mike. Just because you know I only got four silvers yesterday. <laughs> yeah. But I got three I got three British silvers and a and a, and a shilling. So my shilling trumps your uh your wee sixpence. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, Log uh, Logan is a bit of a skite, isn't he, bro? <laughs> Logan Murray, I'm close to 100 silvers already this year. Are you ready, Mike? Flap. I've got a long way to catch up, haven't I? It's truth. I, in fact, um, yep, my little silver container is empty. <laughs> I haven't got any this year. Nothing. Um, but, yeah, that, that'll change. Well, no, actually, sorry, I lie. I've got, I've got the four silvers still in the fines bag pouch, so I am on the board finally now, so that's good. Uh uh, it'll, it'll come, Logan. The more you get out, mate, the more you get out, the more you research the areas you go to, uh, the more silvers you'll get. Don't rub it in. <laughs> Shall I? I was just digging all targets, bro, so it's just it's this lucky machine. What, Digger Mike uh, on his TikTok? <laughs> so, guys, the other thing I wanted to show that I got that I am really impressed with and... Um, Digger Mike sort of um, said to go for this, and then, um, yeah, uh, Charles was able to actually hook me up and, and do a pretty amazing deal on this, but it is the Notka uh, oh, Acupoint. This thing is amazing. The, um, the sensitivity is next level. Uh, I flip me days. I've, I've had some pretty sensitive um machines but this thing here even wound down is like it's it's just crazy um what should we do i mean here's 
it's on and it's only on five. It's on, it's a, even got a fancy little screen, guys. It's mint. So sensitivity is only on five. It's gonna prove me wrong. So that's on five. And if I do the, I'm still getting used to this. So if I crank this up to nine, so you go guys, sensitivity is right up to nine. So you saw I was about here before. So that's picking it up there. And on bigger targets, um, bleh, I haven't actually got a bigger target. Oh yeah, there you go. Something a bit bigger. Check that out, guys. That's nearly about five inches. That's impressive. That is really, really impressive. Um, I've got to get used to turning it off too. There's, there's, um, if you hold it for too long, it goes into the menu. If you don't hold it for long enough, it changes something else. And but this, this guy is, this is a game changer. Fully waterproof as well. Um, uh, I can't actually remember how deep it would go. Um, Digger Mike, you'll know, don't you? you? You know how deep these can go. But my goodness, this thing is nuts. Comes with a spear. Um, comes with an extra one of these. Just a cap to protect it. Um, and yeah, I kid you not. This, yeah, absolute game changer. Absolute game changer. Not sure what the battery's like. Uh, they haven't really sort of fully used it and given it the uh, the hard runs. I mean, I've only been out yesterday afternoon uh, for a few hours. Um, but Mike, Mike reckons he doesn't charge as much at all, and it does last a long time. So quite looking forward to that functionality. Um, yeah, quite a quite a big menu. Um, I don't know everything i've got to go through and play with it all but apparently you can uh if you've got a nocto macro machine with the nocto macro headphones this will actually bluetooth pair up with your headphones as well so when you turn this on it will pair up with your headphones and you'll get the beep through your headphones rather than the big loud beep that it's got it does have um multiple volumes so you don't have to have it so loud. And it also just does have a vibrate function as well. But guys, this this is just new out. Um, it's fairly new out. Uh, I think Mike got one of the first ones, first ones in the country, but I kid you not, these are an amazing machine. Uh, time will tell, uh, just on the, the ruggedness and the and the but being waterproof is a bit of a bit of a bonus, um, especially for what the likes of like me and Mike do in the in the river, uh, but also just that sensitivity and that depth that it's going to go to, that is impressive. So, yeah. So that was the other cool thing. I got myself a digger as well and a finds pouch, so I'm all pretty much set back up, ready to go for digging now. Um, just got to find the time to get back out a bit more. Uh, Logan said, where do you think I could go in Palmy? Uh, I don't really know Palmy that well, Logan, so I would say get on your, if you can download, there's an, uh, what's that aerial photography um, site, Mike, that we that we look at? There's a site that we've loaded down, and it's, um, it gives you aerial, photogra uh, aerial photos of your city, and it goes right back, like, here in Christchurch, we can get areas that will go right back to um, the 1920s, 1940s. Uh, so it's a good indication of like old schools, old parks, what's changed, what's old in your area, what's new. Um, like we used to go to parks back in the day and wonder why they weren't very good. And of course, you look on the maps now and they only, these parks only appeared in the 1970s. So they're all full of one and two cent coins and and, and not much else. So it's, it's a very valuable um, asset, historical aerial maps. Yeah, if you look that up, Logan. The other one is Papers Past. And I do a lot of trolling through Papers Past. And 
if I find a, a park that I like the look of, uh, or a domain, or a school, or a church, or something like that, I'll pop the name of the park, or, or whatever I'm looking for, I'll pop it into the search engine for papers past. And what that'll do is that will flick out excerpts of um, bits and bits and pieces of articles in the old papers way back in the in the day, and it will be like uh, like if you put in a domain, it might tell you uh, 1877 uh, gala day with fireworks. Everybody came from blah blah blah, and whole day and um, drinks were sold on site, and it gives you a little bit of a, a, a blurb on what happened. Um, it's a good way to find an age of a domain, um, and also if things actually happened there. Um, so that would be a good one. Papers passed and um, historical aerial, aerial maps. Um, three metres three meters depth in the water for the old uh, pinpointer. Cheers, Mike. I knew you'd know. <laughs> You're a wealth of knowledge on that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it's crazy good. I leave mine on six. Yeah, I think I've got. I think I had mine set for five, as purely because there were so many nails and iron trash in the um where we were. I basically I wound my sensitivity right back because I mean I was I was sitting the stupid thing on the ground and it would go off. There was there was that much scrappy iron and, and bits and pieces there that it would just um <laughs> it would go, go off no matter where I put it. Uh I use mine in the Avon, love it, and haven't had mine since Christmas time. Haven't had to haven't had to charge it at all. Oh wow. Flip, that's nuts, mate. Ooh, what have I missed there? Cheers for the, oh yeah, sweet, yep. Does it tell you if it's iron? Um, I'm not, no, uh, no, it just sort of beeps, mate. Um, I have a feeling, you can change the tone. Yeah, I, I, I do remember reading that. You can discriminate a little bit where it will give you a ferrous and non-ferrous tone. Um, it does, it, it beeps a certain way for ferrous metals and then it beeps another way for non-ferrous metals. Uh, I haven't gone into that function. Um, I'm probably not that brave enough to try that. Uh, as long as it beeps at me and tells me where the, where the target is, I'm not too worried. Because generally... With the with the Nocta, what I've been doing uh, with the um, nine hundred, what I've been doing is because there was so much trash in this place we were, I swing along and I'm in park one with a, with the iron discrimination on. But what I do is if um, if I get a real squeaky tone that's uh, squeaking up into the nineties, but still running at about 50, 40 or fifty with the with the numbers, I'll hit the old horseshoe, and that'll give me my all metal mode. And if it grunts at me, I know my target is iron. Uh, so there's no point in digging it. And then, so it'll grunt and then it might squeak and all the rest of it. So you know it's a big rusty iron item. And then I'll turn the old, uh, I'll hit the old horseshoe again, turn off the, um, do the discrimination and back to normal detecting. Saves you digging digging up heaps of trash and, and nasty rusty bits of iron. Because um, what I was finding is I was getting rusty bolts and Big old old rusty nails, and they were screaming in the nineties. Um, but yeah, I, I realised pretty quickly that if anything was screaming in the nineties, but still dropping out and dropping back to like the fifties and sixties, hit the horseshoe, and you pretty much guarantee this thing would just grunt at you, um, and 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 tell you that it was that it was ferrous or iron, which was. Good little, good little function to remember. I think most most detectors have it. I know that the eight hundred has it. Just just hit that horseshoe or that descript that all metal mode mode, and once it grunts at you, <laughs> you know not to dig it. Unless you specifically want to dig up big big metal, you might be after a big farm item or relics on the gold fields. I'd definitely put it on all metal in the gold fields and dig dig everything. You might find an old pick or old gold pan with a bit of gold in it. You you just never know, would you? You can change, yeah, Jacob. 
that would help a lot with it. Yeah, I mean, it would, Jacob, but the flip side is, unless you're specifically digging every single target, then it's, it's probably rather irrelevant because um, I try not to dig too much on uh, full stop. So, yeah. Hey, Chris, has the 900 got the high conductor mode? I've been running my manticore on high conductor mode. I wouldn't have a clue, mate. I am still learning it. I've actually got it. I haven't even sat down and read through the manual yet. Um, I got it home. I charged it during the week, and then I raced out with it on, yeah, Saturday, and that was the first time I've used it. So I pretty much turned it on and just swung. I didn't even noise cancel it. I just started swinging it and had a play. And, um, yeah, very cool machine. Um yeah, but still a lot to learn, a lot to learn. Um, yeah, there's some pretty cool functions in there. So, yeah, and quite keen to um, quite keen to crank on with the uh, with the little coil and try out the gold mode as well up on the uh, over on the west coast there and see if I can find some nuggies with it as well. So, who did I see sneak in? Phil Smith. Hey guys, Palmy North used to have a port. And Shannon had an old race course in the 1800s. Have tried to find both, however, with this with this old papers, you might find it. Yeah, papers past. It's called Phil Smith. Um, if you, yeah, maybe with papers past, if you type in, um, yeah, Shannon Race Course or Palmerston North Race Course. Or um, even um, yeah, even the Palmerston Palmerston North Port or anything like that. Just any any keywords to do with the race course or port or domains. Um, things will, you you you'll start finding things. It'll be it'll be very 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 handy. There is often iron in the hole where they're digging your. Yeah, I have I have found that. And yeah, you know, I guess you could you could be right there. But the only thing is, is like what you could be fooled into thinking is that that iron target is the target you're chasing as well. So it's probably oh, what do they say? Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. And it's probably better just to pinpoint it, dig it out, recheck your hole, and pin and oh yeah, there's something else in there rather than have your pinpointer on your your non ferrous. You think it's iron. So you leave it, and then you might be leaving a, a coin in your hole. So, yeah, it depends. I, I guess it depends how you run your actual detector as well as to what you're actually looking for. G'day, mate. Hello. Kids are on school holidays now, so still up and about being mongrels. Hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Denny. How's it, mate? Welcome along. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've been um, trying to put a little bit more effort into the old videos. Uh, I've been vi recording. Um, I've been recording in 4K, 60 frames per second. Uh, so I think the quality of the videos has definitely gone up. The headaches and the patience from the editor is definitely um, getting worn out, though, because everything takes so much longer to load up. Um, once I've edited and done the videos, they seem to take, oh, blimey, they take all night. And sometimes even in the morning, uh, it'll only be like halfway through and I've got to just keep it going. And then I'll get home from work in the afternoon and it'll finally be done. And um, YouTube seem to tend to, uh, oh, they tend to take a fair few hours as well to load up into 4K. They'll load up into, um, what do they call it? Yeah standard and then your high definition they'll load those up pretty quick so the video could potentially go um live straight away but i like to i like to unlist it until it's gone 4k and then so when i when i post it and publish it um as public you've got that 4k version straight away so you can enjoy the video and i have been yeah i've been using some different cameras as well so getting some different angles and and I'm um, trying some new stuff and playing around. It seems to be paying off. So I'm glad you enjoy them, Phil. Glad you enjoy them. And thanks for the uh, thanks for the compliment. There you go, Logan. Phil is in Levin. So I'm guessing that's not too far away from Palmy. 
Um, do you metal to deck, Logan says. Yep, sure do. I use guys just to have your wee conversation, but <laughs> nice. So how far away is Levin from Palmy? Are you are you far away, guys? But yeah. Hey, so something else that I've um I've sort of redone with my knives just recently and um it was pretty cool. I was able to um deliver a couple uh last weekend which was pretty cool um old charles from dredge and z got his knife and he's over the moon with his and stephen dixon got his as well um but what i've done is i've started etching my own logos you give me that one bro and so rather than laser getting them laser engraved i'm actually etching them into the steel now and what this does is it actually eats into the steel and recesses the logo so not only would the logo be a little bit more oh crikey that's a bit bright not only would the logo be a bit more durable and last a lot longer um i can do it when i want because when i've been giving it to the signee he's been throwing it through his laser i tend to wait about a week to a week and a half sometimes two weeks if he's busy and it's it's a delay that i can't really afford um going forward and so what i've done is i got some little stencils made up and I'll flip the camera around. Look at that, guys. So that's my new logo with the knife and the rifle and the stag. And it's hard to tell, but it's actually etched in to the steel. So that goes in probably maybe, maybe one tenth, two tenths of a mil into the actual steel. Might be able to see it a bit better that way. Um, but still retaining the detail. And I'm just using, all I'm doing with that is using a little um, 12 volt trickle charger and salt water. It's a electro etching technique. Um, and all you do is you put a little stencil, little sticker decal on there that's reversed out. And you use a, you put the, Oh, I've got to remember this. You put the positive on the steel, and with the negative, you have a cotton bud or Q-tip or anything like that soaked in the uh, salt solution, and then you just touch the metal with it, and depending on how dark and how deep you want it, or how long you'll do it for, and you just keep doing that, and then once you're finished, you just wipe it clean, give it a rinse so that you stop the, stop the reaction, and then you pull your decal off, and bam, you've got your, uh, got your logo. Look at that, that knife so blimmin' polished. This is Glenn's Adventures knife. You can see so yeah, you see you and in the, in the camera and everything. So everything's all sheathed up now. I've just got to put an edge on them, make some boxes and get everything sent away, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're finally getting there. So um, I think I showed you guys Jade's sheath all finished up. And um, he's got the new logo on there as well. So very, very cool. So I'm quite happy I can do that now. I was a little bit nervous, but quite happy I can do that now. It will speed up my process. I'm not reliant on waiting on somebody else to do something and fix something and, and all the rest of it. So can you get that one now, mate? <laughs> You gotta hold it there. Yeah. So yeah, quite stoked with that. So now I've just got to um yeah, pull finger, get some boxes made up, and get them all sent out. And then I've got a couple more prizes to make. I've got one for Jade and another one for Brian. And then um I'm gonna start making some um slightly different knives. Um I didn't really do much video and post many pictures of the gold nugget handle knife that I did for Charles, for Dredge NZ. So I'm going to do, I mean, I lost a lot of footage on the GoPros that were stolen. So it was, it was a bit gutting. So I sort of abandoned that project. 
But I am going to do another one. I've got another idea on a window handle uh, with some fishing flies in it. So I'm going to give that a go and see how that goes. And um, I might do a full video on that though and do the whole process right through um, from start to finish, which would be quite cool. Phil Smith, I'm a 61-year-old. Levin is, oh, only 55K. That's not too bad, eh? I have a few permissions. But until the ground, exactly, Phil. Good call. Until the ground softens up, I won't be going out. Been, yeah. Nah, well and truly, Phil. We, we're still hitting the... Um, we're still hitting the rivers at the minute, uh, purely because most of the areas are, are a bit, bit hard. And there was one thing we did find when we were over at the farm. Um, even though we'd had a few days of rain, uh, the ground was still pretty hard. But they weren't too worried because it was all just pasture. And um, they didn't care about us digging holes and all the rest of it. We still did it properly, like we'd never been there. Um, but we did find the digging was a wee bit hard. Um, thankfully, nothing was really, really too deep. But yeah, good call, Phil. It's um, definitely is still a little bit too dry to be digging up parks, and um, yeah, yeah, especially public parks and um, high density areas where there's a lot of people, you will get picked on, and uh, yeah, probably told off. Um, cheers, Denz Warriorsman. Can you put the um no the process that i'm doing with the steel mic is it's electro etching so you're using electricity and uh a, a saline solution a salt water solution that eats into the metal so the metals but it, it's a conduction coil type thing whereas wood won't conduct the electricity um so yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't do the same. It wouldn't do anything actually, to be honest, on the wood. Um, I've seen guys doing burnings into into timber handles where they set up a positive and a negative, and they but they put quite a high current through it, and it burns the wood until it starts getting towards the the other terminal. Um, but I don't think you'd better do a logo that way. It'd be a bit weird. Debris filled. They don't like post hole borers for some reason. <laughs> I bet you they don't, mate. <laughs> Gee, you have to be looking for something big if you're using a post hole borer, mate. <laughs> yep, same here. But it's not enough yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we still need we still need a fair bit more rain to um soften the grounds up. I mean, that rain that we've just had here in Christchurch probably has barely touched the surface. It's been so dry here for so long that it's going to need at least a good couple of weeks of some real solid days of rain uh, to penetrate through that top layer. It's just so dry. I mean, that's why everything flooded over on the coast and 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 up up north. It was just the ground is so dry that it didn't soak it up, and the water just ran off and and just yeah pulled and 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 flooded everything. You fell asleep, Mad Kiwi. Am I boring you that much? <laughs> you old man. <laughs> uh, I don't think you missed much, though, bro. Logan, I was at Park on the Ground. Middle Texas. Oh, okay. Well, just be careful with grounds like that, mate, because you might find that the, the ground keeper's upkeeping it for a reason. And if you start digging holes in it, if you don't do it proper, um, you could actually get pulled up and and um, told off. So just just be aware if there's, there's grass and ground that's that's super soft and all the rest of it, it could be that way for a reason. So just be a little bit careful. Make sure that you, you are super super tidy. Because um, if somebody's taken the taking the time to manicure and keep a, a park green right through summer, it's for a reason. And um, yeah, generally those guys take real pride in their in their parks, and they're not too keen on detectorists going in there and digging them up. So just be very very careful, bro. Um, Craig Finlay, where do you where do you get the leather from for your sheaths, and how thick is it? Um, it's three to four mil leather. Um, yeah, I think this lot is. Four mil, don't quote me on it, but it's 
but I get it from Gamaco Artisan Supplies. And they are they're actually Australian based, but they have a sort of a warehouse stockist um, point up north in Masterton, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure it's Masterton. And I've also got a rep down here in Christchurch. And generally, he's actually got um, sheets in his van. And I just, I generally, I'll just buy a sheet off him in the, from his van. I think they're about 600 by 400. Um, nice leather to work with. Really nice leather to work with. Um, I mean, I got when I first started, it was it was quite difficult. But Charles from Dredge NZ, he gave me a few pointers on wetting the spine and soaking the leather a bit more to make it a bit more malleable and also to make it a little bit more resistant down the line, so it doesn't crack and and um, and split. And also, yeah, just gave me some tips on on how to do it. But yeah, Gamaco Artisan Supplies is where I get it. I uh, couldn't tell you how much because I haven't done it for a while, but they have, you can get, I think you can get full hides, off cuts, uh, cut sheets, um, strips, and they do dye, uh, your cords, kits, leather making kits as well, and they do, they do everything. So, yeah. Hope that helps, mate. What? Are you doing like a giveaway? Uh, not to, well. We'll do the end of the end of the stream ones. Okay. Can yeah. you tell me when it's the end of the stream? I'll try. Okay. I'm probably getting close. I'm, okay. I'm running out of things to waffle on about. <laughs> and we've been been going about an hour, and guys are falling asleep. Hey, mad kiwi. <laughs> I don't want to bore you too much longer. Um, the Breezeville, those elves protect us from the bad weather. Yes. Mad Kiwi, no, 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 Patricia. Oh, okay. Is that, a, is that a bit of a side effect? You've been getting Mad Kiwi, just nodding off and being really tired. Yeah, plug, plug cloths are good um, if you want to keep extremely clean. I mean, I've been doing it for 15 years now. I know I know all the tricks and all the rest of it, and I'm pretty, pretty good at it. Um, but definitely if you're a newbie, definitely get a plug cloth or a tea towel, anything old face cloth just something you can put the dirt back on and then when you're finished you just put it all back in there um it definitely is a good way of keeping keeping your plug plugs clean um oh yeah you guys are just chatting away <coughs> so yeah so got myself a new kayak so pretty excited about that got myself a new detector uh i'll be going and seeing Tony at TG Custom Rods in June. Sadly, he's uh, pretty busy. Uh, and then we're going to get a couple of custom-made rods on the go. Uh, he's going to replace my one that got stolen, which is pretty cool. My um, my camo crispy canal rod. So he's going to replace that. He's got pictures of it. So he's going to be able to do it um, to pretty much... It might be identical, but it'll be the same sort of thing. And then I'm going to get a new slow jig rod made as well for off the kayak. Uh, so, yeah, so slowly getting some bits and pieces. Um, and so I'm going to be able to start getting some footage for my weekly vlogs again. And we'll get those up and running. And I'm hoping to hopefully have one that will be out this Friday. I'm going to make them, try and make them every once a week or once every fortnight. And they'll be out on a Friday night. I'll try and get them out on a Friday night so that you guys can enjoy them over the weekend. And then also on my, if I go live on the Sunday, it gives me something that I can pull out a question for and do some giveaways for. Um, same detector as the Scottish detector is. Oh, sweet. Cool. Adam Harrison. How's it, my bro? Hope you're doing well. Not boredom, Marvel. Yeah, it's big side effect. Oh, that sucks, bro. I hope everything else is going all, all good for you, though, uh, Mad Kiwi. Need to uh, tidy up your garden, though. You got radishes growing at the bottom of your roses, bro, <laughs> and your concrete paths. I saw your video today. 
Very, very cool. Very cool. Read again. Not boredom, laugh out loud. Yeah, big side effect. Sleep when body needs it. Yeah, got that. Same detector. Oh, no. You got me there, bro. Oh, it's a Scottish detector. It's got a um, XP Deus, does he? No, I can't afford it. I can't afford a Deus, mate. Far out. <laughs> they're, um, they're a pretty cool machine, but yeah, definitely out of my price range. They're right up there with the um, with the Manticore. So that's a, that's a different league of machines there, Mad Kiwi. Different league of machines. Um, but yeah, so back to, back to the old... Uh, um vlogs i will be doing them on a regular basis so we will be able to get back into doing some giveaways um during the, the live streams and uh get those up and running again and yeah to all those who have won stuff i am on it they are coming i will get the posters sorted and get it all um all, all done out to you it's been a long process i didn't realize how long um long my blooming live streams go for when you're watching through to try and find out who won what <laughs> i do waffle on a lot so hey kayla fan number one how you doing welcome along those stags still going down your way mate um i really don't know adam i mean we were down in otago last weekend where i shot my three and they were going off they were just going nuts down there um apparently they've only really just started up down the, the west coast they were roaring in north canterbury before we went away i'm not sure if they are still roaring um but there's still some nice stags coming out on the facebook forums um there's been a lot of good stags shot this this raw um it's really impressive it's quite amazing um Seen a lot of guys get their get their first big PBs and first stags and and all the rest of it, so it's great. <laughs> well done on your Bambi hunt with it. Ain't no Bambi there, bro. Those those things were monsters. Yeah, but uh, cheers, mate. It was good. It was a, it was an epic trip. I I'll will I'll remember that one for a long time. Um, that twelve pointer was huge. That was that was massive. Still roaring around here. Yep, nice. Yeah, I think they're still roaring up North Canterbury. Don't know about South, but I know they're still roaring up North Canterbury. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm actually taking Hunter away this coming weekend. We're going to go. He wants to get him. He wants to shoot something. So, basically, I'm going to try and set him up with some goats and see if we can't get, get his first goat. And he's pretty keen to shoot a big, big old stinky billy and bring the head home. So, that'll be an epic wee trip. So, we're going to go and overnight her as well. So... It'll be Hunter's first big overnight trip, uh, first real major hunt, and first time sort of having a crack at an actual animal. Um, we've all done targets and stuff like that, but it'll be interesting to see how he goes and whether or not he, he even actually wants to pull the trigger. So, um, yeah, so that'll be a cool wee trip. Looking forward to that one. Hopefully we don't get too cold and doesn't put him off for, for life. <laughs> and I spent the week up in the... Arongaronga Valley working. Jeez, there was some good heads coming out of there. Oh, nice. Were you working but not being able to shoot up there, bro? That must have been horrible. <laughs> Still going down there too, Mad Kiwi? Nice. Yeah, I think that weather's changed now, so I think they'll be going for a wee bit longer still. I'd say they've probably got another still couple of weeks in them. Easy. So, yeah, be good. Right. I'm going to stop waffling, and I know the young fella's all sitting over there. He wants to do one of the draws, so um, I was going to chat about a whole lot of stuff that I'm going to do to the truck, but I think I'm actually just going to I'm just going to leave that and surprise you all with it with the with the video once it's all done. Um, the old Utes coming along quite nicely. It's um, I've got some basically I'm ordering a bunch of stuff for it this week, and yeah, it's 
going to go through some big changes. I'm quite excited about it, actually. I wasn't interested in the hunting. Too many hunters around. I did go for one evening walk along the river, but... Oh, really? So a lot of people up there. It's the one thing I don't like about the roar is, is the fact that you get every Tom, Dick and Mary out and spots that, like I was saying before, you you get spots where you turn up and there'd be never a car in the car park and you turn up and there's like six cars in the car park and the block's only big enough to support maybe four hunters maximum. And it's like, everybody just goes mad, goes mental. But yeah, I fully hear you, Adam. It's it's not great, eh? Any ideas on a good place to take my five-year-old hunting around Christchurch? Been to three places, but not so fun for me. What are you, what are you after, James? Um, what, what do you want to hunt? Like rabbits, possums, or you, you want to go for deer? Because um, anywhere around here close requires a little bit of a climb and a walk. Uh, if you want to get onto animals, if you're just after us after rabbits, then yeah, um, the old riverbeds aren't too 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 bad. They're pretty cool. Um, yeah, pop your place. Only twenty minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Those those popular spots that are pretty close get hammered. Eh? Everybody goes there. All the couch hunters that think they're awesome and all awesome get out to those easily accessible places and and expect to just get a deer within the first five minutes and, and wonder why they don't. Um, but don't go with camo, hybers. Yeah, the only thing is there's a there's a big study that's come out of the States, Mad Kiwi, on this whole hybers thing. And um, I think I said it last time. Um, oh, no, I did. I said it in a comment to somebody because somebody comment wondered why I wasn't wearing hybers. And... There's a bigger percentage of people shot, hunters hunters that are shot wearing hivers or camo hivers than wearing standard camo. And that's because um, the camo, the the orange, the hivers is actually at a distance, is very close in resemblance to the summer coat of the red deer. And the other big 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 factor and this is something that we don't actually realize is there is a massive proportion of blokes here in New Zealand that are partially colorblind and don't realize and orange believe it or not is brown and so and red is gray um so they so those that are partially colorblind cannot actually distinguish between a deer um like a deer's red coat which comes across as, as, a, as a dull brown, and the hive is orange that a hunter's wearing, which still still looks as a, as a dull brown. Um, so a lot of guys are actually advocating that they bring that blue back um, or, or hive is yellow um, because the orange is actually not as great as they first anticipated and first thought. Um, yeah, yeah, the bright blue. Wear blue. They they made the blue for a while, but then they stopped making it for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it's the the orange is actually. I'm of the opinion I'd rather not be seen at all than seen with a bright orange um, vest on, and then shot thinking I was a deer. Um, it would just be the irony in that. I just, I just I feel that if I if I don't get seen and I camo up properly. Um, I'm I'm less likely to probably be to be shot at um, and mistaken for for a deer. So, but you still there is still that percentage of people out there that will shoot at noise and and movement, which is just so wrong. Um, but at least with the camo, I won't be mistaken for an actual animal. With 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 the high vis, it's more like I'll be mistaken for a tree or a bush that's moving, <laughs> rather rather than 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 um, wearing the high vis. So, what do you want? You know where the black suitcase is? Uh, it's probably back where it came from, in the shelf, in the garage. Okay. Do you remember where, where no. over in the, um, oh, yep. in the shelves? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I put it back in there. Cool. 
he's off tomorrow up up to Auckland for a couple of days to go into a concert, scissor concert, so with his with his girlfriend. So getting all excited. So I'll just catch up with the chat. Deerwear hybrids, no, but deer with their summer coat can actually be very, very bright orange mad kiwi. Um, hence why, hence why sometimes it can be um, quite easy to see a dude in the distance wearing a high vis orange, and in dull light be mistaken for for a deer. Um, it's very, very common in 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 America for for, for those that have been shot, they've all been wearing high vis. Um, are you red green color blind, Logan? Red and yellow color blind folks can see. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, what color blind you are, but it just that um, the study said that there is a large proportion of Kiwi blokes that are um, partially color blind, not fully color blind, partially color blind. And the one they have the big issues with is the fact that they see orange is brown. Um, which is um yeah, a bit concerning. <laughs> James Coates, the only thing with blue is bees and wasps like anything, bro. You just gotta walk through their their blooming their territory and they'll attack you. You don't have to be wearing anything and they'll still still eat you. Those things are vicious out in the bush, mate. They are nasty. Oh, hey, okay. I didn't realize that, man, Kiwi. Exactly. Yeah. And it's one thing, actually, one thing, um, one thing Josh James actually says too, which is really cool. And before you pull the trigger, try and identify the, um, the sex of the deer. So you're not only looking at the deer, but you've got to figure out um like he says you figure out the sex and the age of the deer so you're, you're automatically thinking oh that's definitely a hind or oh, is it a yearling two-year-old three so you're automatically picturing in your mind the age so you're confirming that that thing that you're pointing your gun at is actually a deer because you're evaluating it to the point where you're trying to figure out how old it is and what sex it is so um, it's taking that time to identify it without any reasonable doubt that that animal is actually um, an animal and not a person uh, pretending to be an animal. The only thing is, is you do get the odd absolute mistake where a guy's lugging a big set of antlers out through the bush and, yeah, got them on his backpack or something and somebody shoots from behind, shoots at the antlers and ends up shooting the hunter. That is tragic, and that's why I always tell people, point your antlers down when you're packing them out. Don't wave them around. Strap them to the back of your pack, pointing down, um, and and try and cover them if, if, if possible. So, but, yeah, there's always mistakes. There's always going to be mistakes. It's, it's not that hard, Dunstan Downs, but it is... Um, it just always seems to happen every year. Um, people get that buck fever and they think they're seeing what they're seeing and it's actually not. And it, it's it's crazy. <laughs> the states are speed they are, mate. Looks like we're running out of colours. I think yellow, high vis yellow would be all right. I know a few guys that wear the old uh, logging t-shirts and stuff like that. Um, I don't know about pink. We'll be running around in pink camo, you reckon, mate? <laughs> oh, no. Far out. That's exactly it. If you can't identify it without 100% beyond all reasonable doubt, you just do not pull the trigger. Full stop. Oh, it's one hand at the end of the day. Excuse me. You had me in his sights. Yeah, no. Blow that. That is... That's crazy. And it brings me to a story way back in my deer stalkers days when I was um, a member of the New Zealand deer stalkers, um, the Canterbury branch. And they had they organised a trip up into Lake Sumner. And I went up with, I took my truck up and we had, I had three guys in our little group. And there's about four or five trucks went up and we all split off into different areas of the, 
the Lake Sumner block, and we went up the McMillan. And I had this old fella with us and a younger, newish hunter. Um, he told us he was had a bit of experience, knew what he was doing, and and was and was sweet. So we all split up and went our ways, and we all went basically we spread out and we we had on our maps our different blocks so we knew not to venture past that creek because that was my block the old fellow was at the head of the valley didn't go past the other creek up there and so it was coming about in the middle of the day and i was i'd been walking for a fair bit and i come across this clearing and it was right in the middle of my my block and it was a nice little clearing a little swamp on one side bit of grass and it had a couple of deer trails coming out into it and they were fairly well used so I was sitting up on a little rock rocky knob above it and I was just having something to eat sort of not really in hunt mode but just having a having a bite to eat having a drink and I heard a, a, a stick snap in the bush so that put me on full alert and I was like wicked something's coming so I listened sure enough heard a bit of a rustle and then another stick st st stick snap and I thought oh my goodness there's a deer coming sweet so I chambered around into my rifle and put it on half cock I didn't drop the bolt right down I left it on half cock and basically put the safety on set myself up got him behind my pack or I might have had bipod I can't remember and lined up on this opening in the bush where I was anticipating this this deer was going to walk out of. I heard another bit of a rustle and another another sort of just a little noise. I was getting pretty amped at this stage. I was getting really excited. And so I zoomed zoomed in with the um with the scope, got it, I got everything absolutely perfect. I was sitting there, I had my hand on the bolt, ready to drop it down. And I basically I didn't have my finger on the trigger, but I had my hand on the bolt, ready to drop it down. Heard a wee snap of a branch and a real kerfuffle, and then out of the bush burst the young chap who was in our group. And I kid you not, I had him in my scope for all of about a second, and it made me feel sick. I, I got, I freaked out. I basically, I backed off the gun really fast and just just didn't even touch the gun, sat up and with a few rather choice words, let out a bit of a bellow and a holler and yelled at this guy to ask him what the heck he was doing in my block. And it turned around, he had got himself turned around and was completely lost. And as it was, once we got back to camp, he actually fessed up and said he'd only been hunting about two or three other times uh, in open areas, never been in the bush, and yeah, just total muppet. He was, it was not a great situation. I actually left the DA after that. I, I just didn't want any, anything to do with that. That really shook me up. It was not a great situation. To have another person in your crosshairs thinking that person was a deer I felt sick for the rest of that trip. And I I basically I sat around camp and mooched around camp. I I just I felt really weird. It was horrible. I just wanted to deck the guy. I actually wanted to punch his lights out. But um yeah. And the old fella gave him what's for that night too when I told him about it. Far out. He he spat the dummy as well. And it was a real quiet trip home. He didn't say a word. The old codger didn't say much. I was biting my tongue the whole entire way trip back. Um, but yeah, not a good situation. But it just showed me how easy it was to get in your head that what was coming out of that bush was a deer. I had I had no thoughts crossing my mind whatsoever that it could have been a person. I, I had in my head it was a deer. There was a deer coming out into this clearing and I was going to have lunch. <laughs> he was coming home with me. And for that that numpty to walk out into, into the clearing, just it gave me such a fright and just made me so aware of how quickly things can get out of control. Um, and yeah, like I say, I, I felt sick for the rest of that day. It was not a cool trip. Um, but yeah, that's the only experience I've ever had and hopefully it's the only one I ever, ever get to... to uh, 
um, what would you, yeah, go through. But it was it was horrible. It was very horrible. Not cool at all. My uncle got his shot out from him because he, his so-called mate thought he was a deer. Wow. Yeah. But you can understand how quickly things can go wrong, eh? Um, we all say, we all say, oh no, well, how hard can it be? It's beyond a doubt, rah, rah, rah. You've just got to identify your target. In my head, it was a deer walking out of that bush. And as soon as that, that chap walked out and to say it wasn't a deer, I actually got a fright. I freaked out and, and yeah, just backed off the gun so quick and all the rest of it. I mean, if, if I had have been really rolled up and say it was in the raw and he was roaring his way into that, I probably would have had it fully loaded, finger on the trigger, and as soon as he walked out into the trees, I would have pulled the trigger because I would have been so hyped up and amped up and he'd be a dead fella. So you can see how things can go very, very quickly. Very quickly. Oh, cheer, Logan. Legend, bro. Get you in the barrel. Good on you. Hey, David Neal. Ha ha ha. Cheers, David. Yeah, I'm still, I am still pinch myself every time I look at it. I've just got to boil the head now. I've, I've, I've trimmed it all down and de, de um, head skinned it and all the rest of it. Just got to boil it down and then she's, um, yeah, he's going to go up here. He's going to replace that eight pointer. So, but I do have to pinch myself every time I look at it. It's such a cool stag. It's it's a real old, old character. He had um, no teeth on his bottom jaw and the um, the coronets are right down on his um, skull. So he's, he's an old battler. He would have been awesome in his prime, I'll tell you that much. Silver Tunnifar. How's it, buddy? How you going, mate? It's been a while. You're just in time. We're about to wrap it up. <laughs> So, yeah. Last roar, we had a stag come right up to me. My mate would have been a few meters away. Yep. Could see the antlers, didn't take the shot. Later that day. Yeah, fair enough, eh? I mean, just because you can see antlers and moving around and all the rest of it, it's, it doesn't mean it's necessarily a, a, a live deer, eh? Um Beautiful stag, Chris. Tiny T was a little disappointed, but I told her how delicious. <laughs> yeah, tell her it's all gone for a good cause, and it's going to be pride. It's going to sit with pride up on my wall as well. So, yeah, he will not be forgotten. It wasn't all for nothing. It's not just going to be uh, thrown away out in the garage. It's going to be. He's going to be on um, on display out here with um, with pride. So, yeah, I mean, I, I had the same thing, Adam. We. Quite a few years ago, probably eight, nine years ago, I roared up a stag. In fact, it was that eight-pointer there. And he came up. I didn't want to shoot him either. But he came up to within a few metres of us, and he was going to have a go at us. He wanted to fight us. And um, I had a young fellow who was his first ever hunt, so I had to um, dispatch him before he, <laughs> he charged us. But, yeah, makes for a good story, though. It's 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 a good good character stag, that one. So. Exactly, Adam. Exactly. Right, guys. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the uh, members draw, and then I think Brax wants to do the big barrel draw. So, dude, I've been sick as a dog. Had a week down with a cold. Thanks, Tony. Oh no, kids are so giving up. Which developed this chest infection. Oh, okay. We've got a friend of ours who's um in the same boat. She's got a real bad chest infection as well. We like people are thinking it might have been pneumonia and all the rest of it, but that's no good, mate. Well, I hope you're on the uh hope you're on the up and up and feeling better, bud. Who have we got there? NZ Warriorsman. It is, isn't it? I can never read it in the screen here because it's all back to front to me, but you guys see it, right? NZ Warriorsman. Woohoo! Congrats, bro. You are on knife draw number six. Wait, did you pick out the thing already? I've done one. Okay. I'll, I'll Warriorsman. So, Logan Murray, you have three. Glenn Rogan, you have two. Jade has one. And NZ Warriorsman has one. So, congrats. 
Mr. Gold Penning. How's it, mate? From the Netherlands. How you doing? We're actually just about to, uh, we're just doing the uh, draws and we're about to uh, call it a night, mate. You just caught us. <laughs> Adam, I'll send you a little vid through of the Facebook stag on the back. Oh, cool. That'd be awesome. Never sleeps. <laughs> You're a hard man, bro. <laughs> Antibiotics and Olympic whiskey, definitely. I want to guess that person. So don't be looking. Yeah. Pick one out and then at the screen. <laughs> Who is it? Logan! Wait, is that that person? That's Logan Murray. Yep, that's the guy at the top. <laughs> yes, Logan, mate, you are fast tracking it. You are on four now. Good job. Whew. So Logan Murray. You just won your fourth little uh, entry into the knife draw for number six. So you only need one more now, buddy. One more. So, yeah. Well done. Congrats, bro. Haha, <laughs> well done, Brax, says uh, Silver T. Ah, <laughs> yay. Ah, not a worries, mate. Not a worries. Thank you for popping on and thank you for the uh, support, guys. Much appreciated. So, yeah, like I say, I am going to be full on now during the evenings and um, going to be getting a little bit more footage going on for the weekly vlogs. I uh, already got a bit of a detecting already. I'm going to be working on the truck. Um, yeah doing a bit of that, uh, so that'll be on there, and also uh, some knife work. So we'll get back into those, we'll try and make those a little bit more regular on the, um, at least once a fortnight, if not once a week, if I can, if the weather permits and I can get enough footage. Um, of course there will be the big videos, the big hunting, survival, the fishing videos, they will still be coming out um, every couple of weeks. Um, but I'll compress everything else back into the, uh, the vlogs. I think they, they do it a little bit more justice rather than putting together a mediocre long video with just one thing in it, um, rather pulling out all the good parts of a bunch of bits and pieces and, and making up a vlog video, uh, I think it'd be better. Um, and in time we might be able to get them a little bit longer and, and put a little bit more variety into them for you. So, yeah, got some big plans. Channel's done, doing really well, guys. So thanks heaps for the support. Um, oh, I got really excited the other day. One afternoon, my sub count just started rocketing up and it was stupid. It just went mental. And I got 550 subscribers in one afternoon. And I couldn't believe it. It was like, wow, where did all these subscribers come from? It was brilliant. I rocked up over 5,000. 5, and then the next day it started doing it again about the same time about lunchtime and i was like hmm now something's going wrong and then i looked again and youtube had taken them all away they were all gone even though my analytics said that i had had an influx of subscribers from peru uh and they were all comment or not all of them but a bunch of them are commenting on different videos and they all had legitimate um channels YouTube went and took them all away and sent me all the way back to 4,800 subs again. So I got really excited. I got 5,000 subs and then <laughs> poof, the whole lot was all gone again. But we're getting pretty close. Um, I'm sort of getting pretty close to 4,900. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We might do might do a bit of a giveaway if we get close to 5,000 5, sort of in April maybe. Um but we'll see how it all goes. Uh, I hadn't really thought that far ahead. But, yeah. Almost threw me fishing rods away the other week. I entered a two-day comp. Didn't even get a bite. Oh, no. <laughs> that is fishing, bro. That is definitely... I mean, that, that would be me. That would be me. I'd enter a competition. I'd get no bites for the whole entire competition. And then the day after, I'd get something huge. It'll be Murphy's Law, always the case. But uh, next time, buddy, next time. So, 
Yeah. So, guys, I will stop waffling. I love yous and leave yous. Have a great week. Um, hope everything goes well for you. And we will catch up. Um, will we catch up next Sunday? Yeah, no, we probably will. Um, I don't think... I don't think me and Hunter will be out too late on Sunday. I think we'll probably pack it in Sunday morning. I think we're going to do Saturday, most of Saturday out somewhere. We're probably going to go up to Kaikoura um, and chase some goats up in Kaikoura. Um, we'll do an overnighter and then probably walk out that next morning unless he hasn't shot anything by then. I'd say we'll probably shoot a couple of goats Saturday night. And I'd say he'll be pretty wasted. So we'll pro probably camp the night, have break and come back out. So should be able to do another live stream next next Sunday. So yeah, it's pretty cool up there. I'm gonna put a gonna put a post out on the um on Facebook and just um try and get some advice on where the goats are at the moment, where it'd be a good place to take a young fella. Because he's only it's his birthday weekend that weekend and he that's he wants to go away. Um so I thought we were going to do a survival video where we were going to go and build a shelter, but he's actually quite keen to go and um, do a hunt. So I'm not going to say no. So we'll we'll go and I'll start him off with some goats and, and, and we'll work our way up from there. So should be good. Should be fun. So we'll see you next, next Sunday, guys. Um, hopefully all going well. And enjoy your week. And yeah, till the next one. Happy hunting, guys. All right. What one is it? This one here. See you guys.